Today, we're gonna create this glass window pop-up inside DaVinci Resolve. And in essence, there really is only one trick to kind of make your, your glass effect. Um, what I will do though, is I'll cover a couple different ways that you can level up this effect to make it a little bit more personalized, a little bit more customizable. Uh, if you're only looking for how to make the look itself, well, let me go ahead and show you. What we're gonna need to do is we're gonna go to our effects tab. We're gonna go over to the effects menu and we want an adjustment clip. Now you could do this using a fusion composition, but we're gonna want to use an adjustment clip. And the reason for that, because an adjustment clip will be able to see the footage underneath it. Let's go ahead and right click on our adjustment clip and go open in fusion. So we're now in the fusion page for our adjustment clip. And there is not a correct way to do this, okay? So if you've seen somebody else do it a different way, it probably works just fine. This is just the method that I, you know, just works for me. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to hit control space and I'm gonna add in a blur node. You could use the Gaussian blur, you could use a lens blur, whatever blur you would like to use and you feel like works best, uh, but I'm gonna use the basic one. I'm gonna add a blur node and I'm not gonna connect it down here, okay? What I'm going to do is I'm gonna leave it up above and I am going to grab the output end of our media in node and drag it to the input of our blur node. And at first you're not gonna see anything, but if I hit two, to toggle my preview, we now can toggle back and forth between what node we're looking at, right? So if I toggle over to this uh, blur node here and I increase the blur size, now we can see our, uh, our blur. And what will happen is if I go and I grab the output here, and this is kind of a sneaky thing you can do in Fusion, right? And I connect it back to the output over here, it's gonna add a merge node. Now, if you don't like that and that seems kind of weird to you, just go ahead and hit uh, control space, type in merge, add that merge node in. And we just wanna make sure the original media in node is feeding into the yellow input and then our blurred version of it is feeding on top to the green input here. Now I can toggle back over to my media out node and now we can see the blurred version of our clip on top of the original version, right? Well, if you want it all like this, great. If not, what we can do is uh, we can just add in a rectangle node. Again, you can use any version of masking and cutting out that you like. I'm just gonna use a rectangle node and bam. Okay, now in essence, this is it, right? This is like the very basic version of a glassy kind of look on top, right? We've just blurred the background a bit. Now there's a couple ways that we can level up this effect and that's what I'm going to do. So I'm gonna start moving pretty quickly for those who are already comfortable in Fusion. So if, again, if this is new to you, I apologize. Uh, one question you might have is why do we put the rectangle node down here instead of up here? Not, uh, you can do either or. The nice thing about keeping it here with our master merge node is that as we begin to layer stuff on, it's going to mask everything. We don't have to have a bunch Bunch of lines connecting to it. One thing that you'll often see with glass type looks is there's a little bit of bloom, right? It just, um, the way the light will refract and reflect through a glass panel is that it will almost disperse and that's how you get some like lensy blur kinds of looks. So what we can do is you can add a brightness node that'll work or you can even add a soft glow node. But in essence, what we're gonna wanna do is I'm, I chose a soft glow node. I'm gonna hold shift, connect it to our upper branch, right? And you know what? Here's something, something kind of cool that if you didn't know you could do, I'm gonna hold down the alt key, hover over here and create a pipe line or what are these? They're pipe routers, that's what they're called. And that way we can keep things a little bit more uh, straight and separated. And what our soft glow node does is exactly that. It adds some glow to it. And for me, I don't want it that bright. I just want that little bit of bloom, right? So I changed my, I left the glow size exactly the same and I'm just gonna change the gain to, I don't know, we could go 1.4. That seems fine enough to me. This feels a little too strong for you. You know, bring it down. Whatever you wanna work with. And maybe actually, you know what? I might even bring it down. I'm gonna go to 0 0.8. Okay, something else that's kind of bugging me here is that for the most part, um, I like having just a little bit of roundness in the corner. So I went back to my rectangle node down here and I'm going to add some corner roundness and that just, I don't know, I feel like this makes me a little bit happier. Now from here, something we can also do is add a little texture to this glass node and we can add some lighting effects. So sometimes what you'll see people do is they will add in a background node and what they'll do is they'll change the type from solid to gradient. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move our gradient to be the, the corners of our glass. And what this is gonna do is just add uh, a little lighting shading 
element to it. And I'm gonna merge this background node uh, from output to output here from our pipe router, put it on top. And I think we actually, we need to invert this, right? We want the lighter end on top, darker end on the bottom. And then we can just put that blend way down, way, way, way down. That's just like a subtle gradient. You could also change on the merge node, or a background, you can change the apply mode to um, lighten or screen or any of these other things and you just have fun with it. Whatever you feel like is working best for you. Now this will work great for when things kind of have like a clear gradient, you know? So like if you're working with a subject where the sunlight is obviously in the upper left-hand corner or whatever, this works great. Something else that I like to do is, um, I guess, <laughs> add texture to it. So. For me, for this particular look, I am not going to use a background note. I'm gonna delete this, but again, totally viable option. What some people will do is they will go to a stock media website. So you can go to Envato, you can go to Storyblocks, you can go to, what is it, Motion Array, uh, Pexels. There's a ton of free and paid versions of it, and you can get textures like these. They're textures somebody has scanned into their uh, PC, and they're high quality available for you online. And so something you can do is you can just drag something like this onto your Fusion Comp. Again, we're gonna merge it on top. And um, I'm gonna change my apply mode to screen. And maybe we just bring the blend down a little bit. And it's not super noticeable, but if I really mess with this a little bit and even you know you can put it after the blur so you know you could do something like this where we move things around and now it's after the blur and then you can really see the texture there so maybe you know i i go and i add another blur to our media here and then i just blur that just a smidgen and again it's just some texture right uh that's another way of doing something like this the other way you could do this and we're getting all sorts of options today, right? That life is all about choices, right? Make good choices today. We can add a fast noise node and fast noise nodes are uh, exactly that noise. So what we can do is we can also merge this on top and let's toggle back our preview. And uh, maybe again, we just bring the blend down just a smidgen. And on this merge node, I've changed my apply mode to screen. Screen will make dark black areas transparent. And if I pass this in and out, it just adds kind of like a frosted look to it, right? Remember, no right answer, just some different options for you, uh, depending on what you want to use. And now the last thing that, there's gonna be two more things that I'm gonna do. Uh, but before we do them, if you are already losing interest at this point, uh, let me show you how to save this real quick. What you can do is go back to the edit page, take your adjustment clip here, go to the media pool, and then just drag and drop this sucker anywhere in the media pool. So you can go here and then it'll save it for you. So now within this project, I can go and I can grab that uh, template right here, right? So now you have it saved. If you wanna be able to use it across any project, you're gonna wanna save it to your power bins. Power bins are folders that are saved across, like I said, any project. You can go up to these three dots up here. Excuse me. Make sure show power bins is on. Now let's get back into it. So for me, I actually like to use these kind of glass panels for messages or pop-outs. And there's a couple things I like to add to this to just give it a little degree of separation from the background. The first is going to be, well, what should we do first? Let's do a drop shadow first. That seems like it's probably the most uh, bestest. If we try to add a drop shadow right now, and I add it into our pipeline here, right? After all of our little effects, uh, you're not gonna see it. And that's because it's being cut off by our rectangle, right? This rectangle is masking everything in this merge node. Not only is it gonna be a problem because we're feeding in this mask to everything above the merge node, but the bigger issue is that before it hits the mask, nothing is cut off, right? So if I'm trying to apply a drop shadow here, well, there's no real estate for this to work with. So how do we fix that? Well, as always, there's a couple ways that we can go about fixing it. I'm just gonna go through the way that I would do it. So let me go ahead and delete this note here and we're gonna do a little rearranging to get there. So I'm gonna toggle my preview back to our media out node. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply our mask 
in here before we hit the big merge. And you could do this a few ways. I'm gonna go ahead and add in a uh, matte control node, not matte like your friend, M-A-T-T-E, matte control. Add that in here, hold shift and connect it in between here. Now the matte control is gonna be a way to uh, control uh, mats which are another way of, it's kind of like another way of saying mask, but it's different. <laughs> so um, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hold shift to remove this rectangle node and feed it up here into our mat control. And the way I'm gonna do it is I'm gonna hold down right mouse button, not left, right mouse button, release it on the mat control, and we want the garbage mat. We don't want the actual effect mask, or the solid mat, we want the garbage mat. And it's close, <laughs> we just need to invert it. So I'm gonna go over to, you can either invert it on the rectangle itself, which actually uh, probably makes sense, but uh, the other way you could do it is just go to the mat node, go to garbage mat and hit invert, boom. And now if I toggle over this mat node, now you can see we've got some real estate to add a shadow. So what I can do is uh, hit control space and then a drop shadow. I'll go back our preview, and now we have this nice little drop shadow here. Very nice, very, very, very nice. Okay, and from here, I'm gonna add a, a border to our glass, okay? And I'm gonna be kind of smart with it because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna end up animating our rectangle so that it kind of appears on screen. And the way that I'm going to do it so that we don't have to animate things twice is I'm going to first add in a background node, and I'm gonna change our color to white, change it to whatever color sees fit to you. And you could merge it over here. You could merge it in here. You could, I mean, well, actually you couldn't merge it anywhere, but what I think I'm gonna do, what am I gonna do? I think I'm going to just merge it on top over here. I think it's totally valid to merge it between the matte and drop shadow. I just, I don't think it'll affect things too much. But I'm gonna merge it over here and wow, hello, flashbang. To save your eyes, I'm going to, copy our rectangle node and I'm not gonna hit control V. I'm gonna hit control shift V and plug it in. And what I did is I created an instance of this node. So uh, you could also do this by right clicking and hitting paste instance. An instance is an exact duplicate mirrored copy. So if I change the width on one, it changes it on the other. The two nodes are linked. And where this is nice is that I can animate one of them and it'll animate both. Um, to get the border though, we just need to change uh, one or two things. One of them being we need to change it so it's no longer solid. And then we also need to add some border width. To do that, uh, we need to de-instance them because right now they're linked. So I can right click on solid, hit de-instance, and then go to border width, right click and hit de-instance. And you know what, maybe even the soft edge, who knows, let's get crazy. Right click on the soft edge, the instance. Let me uncheck solid. Let me increase the border width. And I'm gonna do it such a small amount. I'm holding down the control key to do fine tuning. Holding down the control key will do small adjustments and you can barely see that sucker on frame. And I'm just gonna add an oh so slight amount of soft edge. And that gives you this border. If you wanted to from here and you wanted to get real jazzy with it, you could even add in a little soft glow on just the border. Maybe decrease the size a smidgen and that'll give you kind of a more bubbly pop out here. But for this example, I don't want that. Now the last thing that we're gonna do is we're just gonna have this thing uh, animate on screen. And to do that, I, I mean, you could do however you'd like. I'm just gonna have it kind of expand out. So I'm gonna click on either a rectangle. Both of these are linked now. I'm gonna go to the height. Set a keyframe on, let's make sure we're on frame zero. Go over a second. For me, that is 30 frames because I'm on a 30 FPS timeline. Hit a keyframe. Let me go back to the beginning by clicking this left arrow, changing the height to zero. And what that'll do is go from zero to 0 0.5. Let's go ahead and smooth out our curve. I've got my spline menu open. I have my rectangle node selected. We're looking at the height property on the graph. This button will resize your window. I'm gonna select these two points and hit F to flatten. And then I am going to take just this top handle and smash that sucker out. That'll look something like this. The last little thing I would probably do is turn on motion blur because I'm a sucker for motion blur. Uh, rectangle node, settings, motion blur. Maybe we increase the quality, maybe we increase the shutter angle. And that will give you, do, 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 do. 
this. Hope that helps you guys. If you have more questions, feel free to ask them. But the best place to get help is probably going to be in the Discord. Uh, we got an editing Discord where people are in there just doing things, man. Just doing. So I appreciate you guys. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.